I remember the exact moment I understood what it meant to be a memory keeper. Not when I first joined the Corps, or even during my training at the Academy. It was the day I watched my father cry for a civilization he'd never known. Thaddeus Blake wasn't a man given to displays of emotion. A senior archivist of the Galactic Historical Preservation Corps, he'd witnessed the twilight of dozens of species. But that day, as he processed the final transmissions from the crystal spires of Lamaria, something broke inside him. I was twelve, watching from the observation deck of our archive ship, the Memoriam. The Lumerian sun had begun its final expansion, its angry red glow consuming the crystalline cities below. Their civilization was old, ancient by human standards, having achieved spaceflight when our ancestors were still perfecting bronze tools. Castiel, my father called, his voice rough with emotion. Come here, son. There's something you need to see. I approached his workstation, where a holographic display showed the last moments of Lumerian culture being uploaded to our quantum archives. But it wasn't the technical process that had moved him to tears. It was a simple message, left by their last historian. To those who remember us, we lived, we loved, we sang songs to the stars. Let that be enough. Father's hand trembled as he translated their crystalline language. This is why we do what we do, Cassie whispered. Not just to preserve data or artifacts, we keep their dreams alive, their hopes, their ways of seeing the universe. Each civilization that falls takes with it a unique perspective on reality itself. Someone has to remember. Someone has to bear witness. That night I couldn't sleep. I kept thinking about the Lumerians' final message. They hadn't asked for their technology to be preserved, or their scientific achievements, though we saved those too. They wanted to be remembered for their songs, their loves, their dreams. Years later, I would understand that this was what set humanity apart in the galaxy. Other species recorded history, yes. But we obsessed over it. We preserved everything, the grand and the mundane, the triumphs and the embarrassments, the epic tales and the quiet moments. The new Alexandria Academy rose from the Saharan sands like a monument to remembrance itself. Its spiraling towers of memory crystal and quantum glass reflected the harsh desert sun, while its deepest levels burrowed kilometers into the Earth's crust, housing the combined knowledge of three dozen extinct civilizations. I arrived on my 18th birthday, following in my father's footsteps. The Academy's motto, etched in a hundred alien languages above its main gate, read, through us they endure. It was there I met Lysander Reed, a linguistic prodigy who could decode alien communication systems that left our most advanced AI bewildered. He had a theory that language itself shaped consciousness, and that by preserving a species' words, we preserved their way of thinking. Look at this, he said one night, showing me a translation he was working on. The Vorth had 67 words for different types of cognitive interconnection. They experienced consciousness itself differently than we do. When they died, we didn't just lose their history, we lost an entire way of being. Orion Vale joined our study group next. A xenoanthropologist with an almost supernatural ability to understand alien cultures, he taught me to see beyond the surface differences. Every species, he would say, carries within it a piece of the universal puzzle. Each one that falls takes that piece with them into oblivion. Unless we remember. Our instructor, Professor Hyperion Blackwood, had been part of the first generation of memory keepers. He'd seen things that haunted him, civilizations that fell before we could reach them. The galaxy is littered with the ashes of forgotten dreams, he told us. Every empty world you encounter was someone's home. Every dead star once lit someone's sky. The Academy wasn't just about learning preservation techniques or xenocultural studies. We learned to use the memory crystals, artifacts that could store not just information but experiences. Through them we could see through alien eyes, feel with alien senses, understand with alien minds. The first time I accessed a Lamarian memory crystal, I finally understood what my father had been trying to show me years ago. I experienced their perception of light as a living thing, a dance of consciousness itself. Their cities weren't just built of crystal. They were symphonies of illumination, each structure a frozen moment of radiance given form. Our first real mission came sooner than expected. The Ked Ara system had sent out a desperate call. Their civilization was dying, not from natural disaster or external threat, but from within. A degenerative condition was unraveling the quantum bonds that held their collective consciousness together. The Minimocene, humanity's most advanced archive ship, carried our team across 12,000 light-years of space. Lysander spent the journey studying their four-dimensional language, 
while Orion developed protocols for preserving their unique art forms. I remembered my father's tears and wondered if I was ready for this responsibility. The Kedara capital world took my breath away. Massive structures of amber crystal rose from rust-colored plains, interconnected by streams of flowing liquid metal. The Ket Ara themselves were even more remarkable, colony organisms that had achieved sapience, each individual a symphony of smaller beings working in perfect harmony. Their chief historian, Memory of Dawn's First Light, became our primary contact. Through them, we learned that the Ket Ara perceived time differently than any known species. They could experience multiple temporal streams simultaneously, creating art that existed in four dimensions. Your people are unique, Memory of Dawn told me during one of our sessions. Other species have encountered us, studied us, even tried to help us. But only humans understood the true tragedy of our passing, not the loss of our bodies, but the loss of our perspective. For six months, we worked to preserve everything we could. The Kedara helped us develop new preservation technologies that could capture their four-dimensional art. They taught us to see time as they did, as a medium to be shaped and molded. But it wasn't all technical work. We shared meals with them, learned their songs, experienced their dreams. When Memory of Dawn showed me their equivalent of family photos, temporal sculptures that captured entire generations experiencing the same moment from different time streams, I finally understood what my father meant about preserving the quiet moments. The burden of memory weighs heavily on those who bear it. Every memory keeper knows this. We carry within us the last moments of dying worlds, the final songs of fading species, the quiet desperation of civilizations facing their end. During our work with the Kedara, we discovered something that changed our understanding of galactic history. In their temporal archives, they had preserved shadows of civilizations that had fallen before humanity reached the stars. Species that had achieved wonders we could barely comprehend, whose names had been forgotten by all but the most diligent of archivists. There were the quantum dancers, beings who had evolved in the spaces between dimensions. Their mathematics described realities we couldn't perceive, their poetry spoke of colors that couldn't exist in our universe. They had transcended physical form, only to have their digital consciousness slowly degrade over millions of years. The Silicon Dreams, a species that had achieved immortality through technological means, left behind vast databases of their collected memories. But data corrupts, systems fail, and even immortality has an expiration date. The final message, preserved in the Ket Ara temporal sculptures, was simple. Remember that we existed. Thirty years have passed since I first watched Lemuria's final sunset. The new Alexandria Museum now covers most of what was once the Sahara Desert, its halls filled with the preserved memories of countless civilizations. Through advanced neural interfaces, visitors can experience fragments of lost worlds, see through Lemurian eyes, feel the collective consciousness of the Vorth, understand time as the Ket Arata did. My son Aurelius serves aboard the Nemesine II. Last week, he transmitted a discovery from the edge of known space, ruins of a civilization that had achieved something close to godhood, only to choose extinction when they realized their advancement had cost them their capacity for wonder. We preserved their choice too. Not all stories have happy endings, but all stories deserve to be remembered. The burden grows heavier with each civilization we archive. We are not just librarians anymore, we are the custodians of the galaxy's collective memory. Every extinct species adds their weight to our archives, their unique perspective becoming part of humanity's greater understanding. In my office at the Academy, I keep a small crystal from Lumaria. Sometimes, late at night, I activate it and experience again that first moment of understanding, what it meant to see light as they did, to feel it as a living thing. I think of my father's tears, of memory of Dawn's temporal sculptures, of all the civilizations whose final moments we've witnessed. We are humanity. We remember. Not just the grand achievements or the technological wonders, but the small moments, the quiet dreams, the lost hopes. We carry within us the memories of a million worlds, each one a unique way of seeing the universe. Yesterday, we received a signal from a previously unknown region of space. Another civilization stands on the brink of extinction, their reality different from anything we've encountered before. Already, the Mnemosyne is en route, racing against time to preserve their perspective. The work continues. The burden grows. But we bear it willingly, for in preserving their memories, we become more than we were. Each lost civilization adds its voice to our song, its colors to our palette, its dreams to our own. As I stand beneath the museum's observation dome, watching Aurelius's ship depart, 
I think of that Lumarian sunset so many years ago, of all the sunsets we've preserved since then, of all the memories we carry. We are the memory keepers. Through us, the lost endure. Through us, their songs continue. Through us, their dreams remain alive. And as long as one species remembers, nothing is truly lost.